I, I haven't quite had that confront of truth or evil, depending on what you want. But I don't know what the fuck anybody wants out of it. Well, what's your, what's your Whoever's, who's get, like all this money is a big thing. Where does it go? Well, we see uh, recently there was a video released of uh, Tom Cruise's birthday aboard the Free Winds, and, and I understand that there was six figures spent on the birthday party for Tom. And that's parishioners' money going to keep Tom Cruise happy. Well, then they figure that's worth it. You know, yeah. they, you know according to him, he brings, he brings in just him being Tom Cruise. For their viewpoint, he probably brings in 100000 a day for this church in terms of interest and positive public relations. And, you know, so uh, six figures in Dick. Right. You know, uh, that, you know, it's it certainly... You could throw a party for him every day, and it wouldn't really put a dent in their bank account. So I don't know what the, you know, a party. You know, people like to get mad at COs who take these big things, and, and Tom Cruise, his party, and there was some. The, the fucking free wins is, let me tell you, is a flea bag. I mean, it's, a, it's not a fucking nice boat, you know. I mean, I've been on that thing. I got seasick every time. So... But speaking of Tom Cruise, you were talking earlier about uh, your your, <laughs> your uh, identity being stripped and being replaced with that of Scientologist, and certainly you can see that in Tom Cruise and in, in well, the I mean, recent I can't videotape speak for Tom that was Cruise. released. I mean, I, I mean, I, yeah, but I would suspect that that's what's happened, you know. And he was off for a while, and uh, you know, he's in gung ho. You know, I'm sure he went through a big ethics cycle and woke up, you know, because he probably had some trouble with his wife and he found his ruin. You know, I think he's probably, I mean, I would just, maybe he's, he has trouble with girls or something like that. You know, that might be his whatever. I don't know. Anyway, he's. But at, at any rate, he seems like the, you know, idea, uh, ideal of what a Scientologist should be. I mean, dedicated. Well, I was in there. You know, COB called me the poster boy for Scientology. I was, I was as gung-ho as you could get. How did it turn around for you? Why, why did you start to uh, doubt? Well, uh, it's, it's, uh, it uh, not only didn't work anymore, the more auditing I did, which I was more and more encouraged to do, the worse I got. I was starting to go fucking crazy. And uh, it was fucking me up. How far up the bridge did you go? I'm a class 5 OT5. I've done all my L's. Done a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call those fucking things? You know, all those other courses, data series things, and blah, blah, blah. One of the things, you know what's interesting to me? There was a big thing about maybe two years ago, or a year and a half ago, that everybody wanted you to listen to your congresses. Which is uh, the all the the uh, Congress was this, you know, meeting that LRH had, starting in 19 early 60s, and he would get a group of people together and he would give a series of lectures on X, and usually it was about it all really had to do with clearing, because all these the Congresses were having to do with clearing, and uh, and I uh, well let me give you. A, Remember that I'm talking about the Congresses. I'm going to give you the unabridged version. Is that okay? Sure. You sure? Yeah, fine. Okay. Um, when I was in that TRS course, um, my very first week in Scientology. Now, again, I'm an actor, so you know, communication is something I kind of do for a living. So, and that's a whole course about communication. So, I felt like I'm pretty good at this naturally. And one of the exercises is. Uh, you take a, they use Alice in Wonderland, which has got full of these wild kind of uh, sentences, and you take it and you, you read it to yourself and then you deliver it as your own. That's a TR1. TR2 is properly acknowledge somebody. So they say off with your head and you say thank you to make sure they know it and, end it, and there's all these other things. Now, here I was doing this TR. It was happened to be TR2. And somebody said off with your head. And I said, my God. And they flunked me. And I said, why? And they said, you know, because you're showing, uh, you know, it's supposed to be just thank you, good, whatever. I said, no, read the fucking thing. It says appropriate acknowledgement. 
And somebody says, off with your head, why do you think he chose Alice in Wonderland? And they bring the technical, the head technical person in the fucking place, and they're all invalidating the shit out of me, and I'm sticking to my guns. I finally am crying. I said, you guys are fucking wrong. Who the fuck talks like that? Thank you. I got it. Okay. Good. Wow. That would be way too much. Wow. Okay? I totally duplicate that. This is the way you're supposed to talk. I'm really talking to you. But do you see how I'm not? So it's there. I'm doing, this is perfect in terms of their idea. All right, I got it. Okay, so that's really, that was good TRs, wasn't excellent. Excellent TRs is more like this. You know, you're really conversational. But I'm not moving, and I'm really looking at you, and I'm ready for everything. And I don't blink, and I'm not really, your eyes stink. Okay? So it's that kind of fucking deal. Some gum wore Sue up. Anyway, the, um, that's just a private joke. You know that one, right? Anyway, um, Mugu Gai Pan. These are words that are that just you can talk gibberish in Scientology to help you learn your TRs. And one of the things written down is Sum Gum War Su Up. That's not a sentence. That's like written like Chinese, S-U-M. Anyway, so uh, at any rate, so I'm in there and I'm fucking crying and shitting and like blah, blah, blah. So finally I stop and I, and I toe the line and I'm like, thank you. Okay, good. You know? And then... About four years later, in some event, uh, um, COB, David Miscavige says, hey, there's been this big breakthrough in this golden age of tech. Fucking piece of shit. They, uh, uh, they, they, and uh, one of the things is, here's the real thing. On it. People have been doing the improper acknowledgement. You're supposed to have, it says, appropriate acknowledgement. And they have LRH on tape saying, you know, somebody said it off with your head. And he goes, my God, that's the right way to do it. So here I was, this guy, first day of school, and I had it right. Now, cut two. You're asking me how I got out. So I'm in the fucking thing, and they keep telling me, I got to do this action, and I got to do this, and you got to do this set checking, and all this shit. And I'm like, you fucking people. I wouldn't show up here if I wasn't ready. And there would be set checking, which is basically asking me for my crimes and charging me thousands. I probably paid 50 grand, excuse me, in, 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 in set checks to get this shit together because everything was fucked up so it must be that I'm I'm fucked up and I kept saying these sex checks are killing me and this is the standard tech now this is the golden age of tech and I finally just said you know something motherfuckers I don't care you could get LRH to fly down here back from fucking target 2 and tell me that I am fucking doing it wrong I am not going in session and doing this shit you guys are fucking killing me I am here to tell you you're fucking me up so I'm out of here until you fucking wake up, okay? And then they come back to my house and they're offering me free auditing. I say, show me where free auditing is standard. You're not giving me standard tech. Now you want to fix it by more on standard shit? Get the fuck out of here. You ask Griffey Blythe and the whole rest of those motherfuckers at AO if this is a lie. It's the fucking truth. And I'm out. And then they call and I just went on course. Because I couldn't take any more of this fucking auditing. It was killing me. So then they come out with this thing that, Jason, you have to see this. I wouldn't even go to events, you know, because me, I'm in events. Everybody's like, hey, how you doing? And I go, good. I just couldn't fucking lie anymore. I'm ready to fucking die, you know. I, and I told them, I'm not going. I can't participate because my role was like Jason Begay. I couldn't be like, yeah, well, I'll tell you the truth. I'm fucked up. I hate OT5. And everything's going fucking shitty, and it's fucking not working, and it's costing me a shitload of money, and I'm more unhappy than I've ever been in my entire fucking life. What would happen if you spoke truthfully? Well, I would tell that truth. I would talk to RTC and all these things, but it's bad people. It's none of anybody else's business. You're not supposed to talk about your case. So this is going on, honey, this is going on for, I was in Scientology maybe 10, 11 years. The last eight years, like that, Okay. And I'm paying fucking money. Maybe I paid a million fucking dollars. I don't know. I don't even keep track. I just said, what the, okay. Here's another fucking thing. This is going to work. You think so? Yeah, we finally got it. So anyway, on this fucking thing, I'm out of thing, and I'm doing course, and I'm just off auditing lines, you know? And then you've got to see this thing, Jason. He's going to fucking key you out. And I go in, and they show me this fucking, uh, uh, and I'm looking at all these people who are on OT7. And they're going nuts with the sex checks, too. And I'm like, this is fucking crazy. 
These people like, you know, they're supposed to be home auditing and then they have to go to flag every six months and they're there for like six fucking weeks. How are you supposed to? What are you, crazy? And they're coming home like, uh, uh, I had a really good six months check. I mean, these fucking